So tonight is pretty um, intense for me because as I sat there in that funeral, you just begin to recollect on everything. That could be me. It's something about funerals. You start to think about everything. And that could have been me. I'm gonna share a little bit of my testimony. Christina um, inspired me to do so. Um, a few years ago, I graduated from high school and I wanted to go to college. Now, many of you know, me and my grandmother are very, very close. My grandmother told me, don't go away to college, stay home. I'm thinking, you know, she don't want me to home. You know, it's older people, she just saying that because she want me to be home. So I went away. I went away to college. And prior to that, I had started dating someone. We were together about three months, I want to say, and I thought I knew him like I knew myself. Not even a month of me being in school, he began to beat me. And this is the first time I'm ever, I'm ever even saying the full story. I've said bits and pieces, and I know a pastor, I almost said prophet, pastor, Fauntleroy, he picks up a lot. So I know he know bits and pieces, but he began to beat me. And you know when you go through things like that, a lot of people don't know unless they've been through it. When you go through things like that, it's not so easy to say, I'm going to get up and leave. That's right. So I stayed. Months went by, he continued. I had a black eye. I had busted lips. Almost had broken bones. Meantime, never told anybody. My family, nobody knew. I would speak to my family every day, and nobody would know. Fast forward into the second quarter of the year, the second semester of the year, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back home. Maybe I can get out of it. Got back home, thought things would get better. We were on the corner of 116th Street, and this is 120, we were not too far from here. And he literally dragged me up and down the street, oh my God. Oh my God. literally on concrete. Oh my God. And there were people outside and nobody helped. Oh my God. And I still stayed after that. A couple months went by and I had met Prophet formally. We had been friends on Facebook for about three years and I believe he was preaching here. And I was like, you know what? I've been in church my whole life, so I told myself, I, w I told Apostle that I would never join another church. Because when you come out of a church, it's not easy for you to leave it and go somewhere else. But I had already oh, left my church. And I said, you know what? God is leading me to come here. I don't know why. I'm not going to join, but I'm going to come. And I sat right back there with Sister Kenyatta. I think the row behind her. And... The first two people who came to me were Prophetess Frederica and I believe Mommy came to me. And they were so genuine and I needed that because I was still going through my city. I was still, when I came here, I was still dealing with this person. And he would text me while I was in church, think I was lying about being in church, you know, things of that nature. And Apostle, the first, the first time I ever came here, Apostle prophesied to me. He didn't know me from a can of paint. He prophesied a job. He didn't know that I had an interview the next week. Long story short, I went to the interview and got the job. So I said, Lord, maybe you're telling me something. Maybe I'm going to start coming back. I started coming back and coming back and coming back. I believe it was the pastoral anniversary. Larry A.G. came here. And he prophesied to me. He said, the, and the person that you're with now, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. And he said, now praise God for it. Did I want to leave at the time? No, I didn't. Because that's when you're accustomed, it was two years at that point. When you're accustomed to somebody, anything new is scary to you. Even if you're in a life or death situation. And I was in a life or death situation, he could have easily took my life. I believe it. But I praise God for it. I went home and it was like a, a newness came over me. And I said, you know, I said, to, I said, God bless you. And I was the end of that. Then it didn't get it didn't get 
better, better after that because Prophet and I, he's my husband now, by the way. Um, Prophet and I started dealing, we started dating, and as many of you know, that baby he told her back there is ours, and she was conceived out of wedlock. Now, I, I don't want to say I was new to the church world, but my church is in New Jersey, so it's a whole different setting. He was, he's prominent. He, a lot of people know him. So to be pregnant with his child brought a lot of attention on me. A lot of unwanted attention. People talked about us. Said all kind of, it was, I didn't even want to come to church because I was so ashamed. And we didn't find out I was pregnant with her until I was three months in. And many people didn't know, but we were already talking about marriage before I found out I was pregnant with her. But it made it look like when we got married, that we got married because I was pregnant with her, which wasn't the case. So you know people talked about that. That whole time I was pregnant with my daughter, I was depressed. Though. I don't know if you remember, First Lady, the first time I came back to church after letting you guys know I was pregnant, I sat all the way in the back. It was the youth conference. I didn't even want to wear a youth shirt. I, I forgot which one y'all made me put on a youth shirt. I didn't even want, I was so ashamed because I wasn't raised that way. And I sat all the way in the back and I believe Lyanja Burrell preached and I was so ashamed. And fast forward into having my daughter, I got postpartum depression. So it was like things back to back to back to back. It's like God took me out of one place. And it's like, well, God, I'm going through again. Got postpartum depression. I was coming to church. I was smiling. I was depressed. Days where I had my daughter in my hand, I was contemplating life, literally. I said a few weeks ago when Minister Tiffany had preached, that same, the day before that, I said, God, if this, if this is what life is going to be like, take me now. And I was looking at my daughter while I was saying it to God. I've never been in a space like that in my life, even when I was going through what I was going through. And God began to speak to me through First Lady, through Apostle, through my husband, through um, youth pastor, through Minister Tiffany, and through Precious. It was, it was, and Minister Dawn and Prophet Cedric, there's a lot more, but I'm just saying who's really coming to my mind right now. And thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. It took Apostle giving me a theme to preach called Pur There's Purpose in My Pain for me to actually come out of it. It took me having to preach to people in order to get myself out of what I was dealing with. So I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to get that out. Amen. I just want to give honor to my apostle. God bless you. God bless you. To make this all possible, first day, God, I love you so much. Thank you. And I'm going to give you to the Christina, to the precious, to the pastor, my husband. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I know many of you heard me. When I said Sister Christina was in my message, Apostle Adam said, it's not my message, it's God's message. So, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Mark. And Apostle has a lot of sayings, as y'all can see, because his kids got up here and said it already. But like he says, I'm going to hit it and quit it. I'm going to probably be a little bit shorter than Sister Christina. Because I feel God moving already. Mark, the fifth chapter. The 25th verse. And it reads upon this wise. And a certain woman. Which had an issue of blood. 12 years. And had suffered many things. Of many physicians. And I want you to pinpoint that. Because I'm going to go back to that. And was nothing. Better. And was nothing better. But rather grew worse. The 27th verse says. When she had heard of Jesus came in the, pre in the press behind and touched his garment. Somebody say press. press. 
for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, yes. I shall make I shall be made whole. Oh. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, yes. and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. plague. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you for allowing me to come before your people, oh God. God, I just thank you for allowing me to grace your sacred death, oh God. Anoint these lips of clay, oh God. Mold me, oh God. Shape me, oh God. Whatever that you want me to say to your people, oh God, you speak through me, oh God. Don't let them see me, but all of you, oh God, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, oh God. Oh God, allow us to push through the pain, oh God, tonight, oh God. Allow somebody to be a delivered and set free on tonight. And we give your name all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't want to, from where I'm coming from, I didn't want to um, stray away from the theme. So I have no topic on tonight. I just want to be simple. The theme is women pushing through the pain. And that's going to be my topic as well as the theme. And here we, we have a woman who has been struggling with the issue of blood for 12 years. Somebody say 12 years. She was considered a castaway by many. She had spent all she had on doctors and yet she found herself getting worse instead of getting better. I just want to ask the church, what do you do when you have tried your every option but your situation still gets worse? Amen. Many of the times in our lives, we go through very painful things, whether it be physical or spiritual. We go through things like rape, like Sister Christina said. We go through heartache. We go through heartbreak. We go through low self-esteem. We go through not loving ourselves. We go through suicidal thoughts. We go through bouts of depression and oppression, especially as women. Now, the Bible says that the women had spent all that she had on many physicians and she still was not healed. Somebody say still. still. The woman went to, the, to every doctor expecting to receive a healing that only the doctor could give to her. And that is many of us on tonight. It's like when you're, you're baking a cake, there are certain ingredients that can be substituted with something in the event that you do not have the original, the original ingredient. But when it's all said and done, the cake won't taste as good as it would if you would have used the original ingredients in the first place. And it's just like now, we substitute doctors for our pain instead of going to the real doctor that can give us the true and total healing. We turn to significant others to be a doctor. We turn to our friends to be a doctor. We turn to our family to be a doctor. We turn to drugs and alcohol, even in the church, to be a doctor. We turn to everybody and everything except for Jesus. Now somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what doctor are you going to? Now when we go back into the text, it says, when the woman heard about Jesus coming, she pressed. She pressed. Yes. Somebody say press. press. I know I keep telling you how to say something, but I'm building. I'm getting somewhere. She pressed behind him and touched the hem of his garment, and her blood was dried up. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, 